can you walk me through that? Because I'm, I'm still kind of confused. How do you date? Yeah, teach me how to date. I, <laughs> the, okay, we have preferences. I mean, you've once said you can hook up with anybody, anybody on the street and live happily ever after. But we do have these Well, we're not encouraging you to hook up with anyone. We're encouraging you to be picky, 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 picky. We're encouraging you to have experiences and get very, very specific about the details of what you want. But then, and this is the part that most everybody is missing, you're doing that. You're getting picky, picky, picky. You're saying, don't like that, do like that, don't like that, do like that, don't like that, do like that. And all of that is being launched into your future. But then, you've got to be a match to what you're saying you want. You can't be observing or remembering or telling your friends or talking to the psychologists about, or anybody, even us, about all of the things that are going wrong and maintain vibrational alignment with what you want. A bad experience and a continued dialogue about it just keeps it active in your vibration to attract it again and again and again and again and again. There's a fine line here that we have to walk between activating these things we do not want and being discerning. I mean, when... The, the, I, that's unfortunately what I'm doing now, looking for red flags all over the place. Well, they're not hard to find because if you make a commitment to a relationship, now you're looking for red flags in terms of behavior. What do you think are the top three components in looking for a relationship? Now, we already heard one from you. That magnificent sexual attraction was really big. That was a very active vibration within you. And it was a ragingly active vibration in him. And it seems to be your only point of harmony. Uh, and so if you were thinking like he is thinking, you would have come together in that point of harmony. You would have had a wonderful experience together. And you'd still be saying very nice things about one another, you see. But if there are other things that you want that are over there in your vibrational escrow, you've got to keep them active too. And what happens sometimes is the one active thing is what you match up on because you haven't kept all of the things that are important to you active in your vibration. And so we really agree with you. It takes some discernment. It takes some paying attention to how you feel. It takes some deliberately moving up the emotional scale. And it takes some awareness that this thought feels better than this thought. And it takes a determination to try to hold yourself in the vibrational patterns that feel good. And we know that through trial and error that you attract all kinds of things that might not be your first choice. But hopefully in that process, that's where you get so that you focus more deliberately. And so after the fact, do you really think that this relationship is finished? In other words, have you stood back from it far enough to say there are not enough powerful matches for me? Can you say that? And would you feel wrong in saying, oh, but the match that was there was a match, was a match, was a match? And I wasn't stupid for following out that match. In other words, we did have a strong point of attraction. And there's nothing wrong with me for having followed through on that point of attraction. We think what the problem is, is that so many of you get all of these images in your mind about what a relationship is supposed to be. And it's all right for you to get those images and the universe will deliver to you exactly what you think a relationship is supposed to be. But you've got to not only get clear about what you think a relationship is supposed to be, you've got to be become personally a vibrational match to what you think a relationship is supposed to be. So from this experience that you've just had, what do you, from your personal perspective, this isn't for anybody else, what do you think that a relationship is supposed to be? What would it take to make you happy in a relationship? What do you want? Laughter, fun. And was, was any of that present? When he was on drugs. But you see, what we're trying to do, we're trying to help you let yourself off the hook. What we want to hear you say is, yes, laughter is important to me, and he laughed, so I thought it was a match. Divine sex is important to me, and it was there, therefore I thought we were a match. We're trying to help you let yourself off the hook. We don't think you matched up so badly, but having explored more deeply, it's just like Esther discovering from the life experience that she's living, her current experience is launching desires that she is currently not a match to. She's got to get up to speed with that, and it's true for you too. So why are you saying to yourself, get up, you little dummy? 
Why aren't you saying, hey, I can see why I was drawn to him, and I can see how he was an answer to many things that I wanted, and I can see how these active things within me attracted those active things within him. But I also can see that through the process of this experience, I became clearer and clearer by seeing what I didn't want to know more clearly what I do want. And it's not fair for me to demand that anybody be what I need them to be. It's only important that I discover what I want to be so that I can now achieve vibrational alignment with it. Because of this relationship and all that you launched out here, you're going to find somebody that is a match to all of those things that weren't present within him. And the fact that they weren't present within him is part of the reason that they are now so present in your vibrational escrow. In other words, you know more what you do want when you've lived some of what you don't want. Is this a repetitive thing? Did he mirror some things that you've had from other relationships? Somewhat, yes. And so all that means is that I'm having relationships that I don't like. I'm talking about the parts that I don't like. And so the universe is saying, well, she wants this and she wants this and she's got this active and she's got this active. So the universe is always delivering to you the parts that are active within you. So it's really not a hard thing. It takes some practice, but you can activate the parts of that relationship or any relationship that you'd like to repeat while you de-emphasize the parts of them that you're not wanting to repeat. Would you say to us that you want the universe to deliver to you the perfect and final relationship and you want it now? We say that can't happen because you right now aren't a match to the perfect and final relationship that you're looking for. You're right now a match to a relationship pretty much like the one you just left because the one you just left is the one that's so active in your vibration. So what you want to say in your prayers at night is, please, universe, don't bring me a partner now. Because when he gets there, he's going to be so much like what I just had that it's not going to be fun. So give me a little time to clean up my vibration. And I'll clean up my vibration by remembering the good times, not by putting the whole baby in the basket and condemning the whole thing. I know it's about me. It's not about him. That's well, it's about both of you. He's vibrating, you're vibrating, and you came together on vibrational points. You see, all relationships are better in the beginning because both of you are optimistically looking for the best of each other. So that's the basis of your relationship in the beginning. So you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on. It's no wonder the sex is great. When you're in alignment with who you are, you're in alignment with all of that powerful energy you see. But as time goes on and you begin nitpicking over this and that in each other, you lose your connection with who you are, and then your relationship is just based upon upon those points of attraction, in other words, the, the bad parts of him that mirror the bad parts of you become part of your relationship, just like the good parts of him that mirror the good parts of you become part we of We could have made it work had we focused on the good only. Absolutely. But here's the question that we want to put to you. We think this will really make sense to you. You could go to the best restaurant in town and order what you usually like to eat and have a fabulous meal. Or you could go to the worst restaurant in town and try to teach them while you're there how to fix your food the way you like it. (laughs) So creating isn't about standing in a spot that's wholly what you don't want and then just lining yourself up until it becomes what you want, that's working law of attraction in a really hard way. You don't have to factor in what everybody else is doing. Just clean up your vibration and the universe will deliver to you the perfect partner, you see. And you'll know it. You'll know it. You won't feel the reluctance you felt. You won't be trying to make it work. You won't be working through the hard times. You'll know it. You'll be licking his face. You'll know it. And that's closer to you now than it was before you met this one because the activation of desire has kicked into high gear. And all you got to do is get off of this I'm mad at me platform or I'm mad at Abraham platform or I'm mad at the laws of the universe platform and back into your empowerment that says I get what I vibrate and I can see the matches there and that's worth cleaning my vibration up about and I can do it and I don't have to do it all at once and I got plenty of time and oh boy I know there's good stuff waiting for me and it's just a matter of me coming into alignment with it and meanwhile I'm having a good time eating at the restaurants that almost please me thank you (laughs) 